the first property of the log function that we are going to look at refers to factorizing the argument of the log function. Now this thing in here is called the argument. Now the argument can be factorized into m times n. We'll look at an example in a minute. I just want to state the general situation. So we've log of m times n to base a. It can be broken into two log terms. So we get log of m to base a plus log of n to the base a. So here's a fairly simple example. Suppose that m is 100 and n is 1000. And our base a is 10. Well, we can break that into log of 100 to the base 10 plus log of 1000 to the base 10. Let's just check this because this one we can do without a calculator. 100 times 1000 is a 1 with 5 zeros. Log to the base 10 of 100 is actually 2 because 10 to the power of 2 is 100. Log of 1000 to base 10 is 3 because 10 to the power of 3 is 1000. Log of 100,000 to base 10 is 5 because 10 to the power of 5 is 100,000. So you can see that 5 is indeed equal to 2 plus 3. Here's another example. Log of 64 to base 2. Now that is actually 6. You can check that 2 to the power of 6 is 64. 2 2's are 4, 2 4's are 8, 2 8's are 16, 2 16's are 32, 2 32's are 64. But we could factorize 64 as 4 multiplied by 16, and then we can apply this property here. We get the log of 4 to base 2 plus the log of 16 to base 2. And this should work out to be 6. Now log of 4 to, ba 4 to base 2 is 2, because 2 to the power of 2 is 4. Log of 16 to base 2 is 4, because 2 to the power of 4 is 16, and it does check out. Now the proof of this is easy. What we do is we, we let log of mn to base a equal x, log of m to base a equal y, and log of n to base a equal z. And we write these as statements involving powers. So this means that a to the power of x equals m times n. Here we have a to the power of y equals m, and a to the power of z equals n. So what we want to prove is that x equals y plus z. So what we do is we multiply a to the power of y by a to the power of z. Of course, we know that we must add the powers because the base numbers are the same. We get a to the power of y plus z. But we know that if we multiply a to the power of y by a to the power of z, that's just m times n. But m times n is a to the power of x. So we have a to the power of y plus z equals a to the power of x. The base numbers are the same both a. So that means that the powers are the same. y plus z equals x. That's exactly what we have to prove. y plus z is log of m plus log of n. x is log of m times n. Now the second property we want to look at occurs when the argument of this log function is a fraction. So what we do is we get the log of the numerator, which is m, minus the log of the denominator, which is n. Now here is an example. Suppose we want to get log of 81 over 27 to base 3. Let's just look at this by itself. Now 81 divided by 7 is 3, so this thing is just log to the base 3 of 3. What power do we raise 3 to to get 3? Well, the answer is 1. So the left-hand side is actually 1. Now, these are very contrived examples, just to illustrate these properties. So I'm picking numbers that are easy to work with, obviously.
Uh, let's look at the right hand side. What is log of 81 to base 3? Well, that's actually 4. Because 3 to the power of 4 is 81. Log of 27 to base 3 is 3. 3 to the power of 3 is 27. And we get 1. So both sides are equal. So what we do is we put the... If we want to get the log of a fraction, we get the log of the numerator, which is 81, minus the log of the denominator, which is 27. Now let's look at a proof. I'm going to call this term here x, this term y, and this term z. So we're going to write these log equations as power equations. So this statement here means that a to the power of x equals m over n. a to the power of y equals m here, and here a to the power of z equals n. Now, how do we, say, combine these two to get this one here? Well, we just divide. You see that if we take a to the power of y and divide it by a to the power of z, well, that's the same as m divided by n. Well, let's just break this down first. Bases are the same. So we use our rules for powers or exponents. This thing is called a power or an exponent. What we do is we subtract the powers. So the base numbers are the bases are the same, they're both A. So we take the power on top and subtract the power underneath. And that must equal M divided by N. But M divided by N is A to the power of X. So now we have that a to the power of y minus z equals a to the power of x. Since the base numbers, base values are the same, then the powers have to be the same. So y minus z must equal x. But that's exactly what we have to, what we have to show. The next property we want to look at is when we're getting the log of something that's raised to a power. So the argument of this log function is m to the power of n. It's called the argument. It turns out that we can take the power and multiply in front. So log of m to the power of n to base a is n times log of m to base a. Now we can use the first property to prove this. That was the property for when the argument is a product of terms. We can write the left hand side here as log of m times m times m etc. And how many m's do we have? Well we have n of them. Well this is probably not the best way to prove it but if n is a positive integer we can write it like this. We have n m's. This proof really works when n is a positive integer. So n could be something like 5 or 6 or whatever, so that we can write it like this. So the first property we discussed said that we can look get the log of each of the factors of m to the power of n. So we can just sum the logs. That was the very first property we looked at. Well, we looked at it for two terms. We looked at it for the log, or two factors, the log of m times n to base a. And we saw that it's log of m to base a plus log of n to base a. We can actually extend that to more than two factors in the argument. There's actually n factors here. And so we have, we're summing n log terms. But the thing is, all of these terms are the same and we have n of them. So we have n log m to base a terms. So we can write this as log n log of m to base a. Now the last proof only worked when n is a positive integer. Now I want to give a more general proof which will work for any real number n. So let's call log of m to the power of n to base a x that means that a to the power of x equals the argument. a to the power of x equals the argument of the log function, which is m to the power of n. Let this other log term b 
be y. Let log of m to base a equal y. That means that a to the power of y is the argument. Now what we want to do, of course, is to show that x, which is this term, equals n times y. So we need to look at these two equations here. We see that m is just a to the power of y, so we can replace m with a to the power of y. And look at this equation here. So we have a to the power of x equals m, which is a to the power of y, to the power of n. So we just saw, I just subbed in for m here. I subbed a to the power of y in for m because a to the power of y is equal to m. Now to get rid of brackets here, we just multiply the powers. So we get a to the power of y times n. So we see that the base is, are the same. So that means that the powers must be the same. So x must equal y times n or n times y. That's exactly what we're trying to prove. Let's look at one quick example. Suppose we want to get log of 4 to the power of 3 to base 4. Well, we can now pull down this power. So it's 3 times log to the base 4 of 4. So we can take the power, which is n, down in front. So that's what we do. And that's equal to 3 times 1, because log of 4 to base 4 is 1, because 4 to the power 1 is 4. Actually, 4 to the power of 3 is 64, and log of 64 to base 4 is 3. 4 to the power of 3 is 64. Now, the 4 thing is not a property, but it's a formula for changing the base of a log function. Suppose, for example, we wanted to calculate log to the base 2 of 12. Well, we can't do that on the calculator, because uh, the log button on the, on the calculator is log to the base 10. Well, the 10 doesn't appear on your calculator, but the log button means log to the base 10. So, you know, we want log to the base 2. Well, we can actually change this log function so the base becomes base 10, and then we can work this out on a calculator. This is what we would do. Suppose we want to change from base 2 to base 10, because then we can use the log button. Um, there is another log button on your calculator. It's called LN. It actually stands for log to the base E. Um, that's something I cover in calculus. but So I won't discuss that button now. We could use it. But we're going to use LOG, which means log to the base 10. What we do is we get log of 12 and divide by log of 2. So it's quite easy to, to remember this. The argument of this log function appears on top. And... Uh, the base appears as the argument in the denominator. So we get log of 12 and divide by log of 2. Now I've written this down to five decimal places. If we want to check this answer, we should put 2 to the power of 3.58496 and get 12. Well, we know that 2 cubed is 8, and 2 to the power of 4 is 16, so we expect to have a value that lies between 3 and 4, if we want to get 12. Okay, we get 11.99999. Well, that's, we're allowing for rounding, of course, because this was rounded, so it's approximately 12. So, what we need to do is change to a new base. Now, the new base we use is 10 because it's convenient. We can work it out, work this out on a scientific calculator. But this base could be anything. I could have had log, I could have had the base 2 here, or base 3, any number, and we'd still get this. It doesn't matter. So again, the argument of the log function now appears on top. And this base here appears as the argument in the denominator underneath. 
So here's our formula. So A is the old base, and we want to change it to something new. B is the new base. You see that M, the argument of this log function, appears on top, and our old base A appears underneath. Sorry, this should be A. So this here appears here. And our new base B can be anything we like. We usually have used 10 because we can then go to the calculator. So to prove this important formula for changing, changing the base of a log function, what I will do is let this term here equal x, let this term here equal y, and let this term here log of a to base b equals z. So what we want to prove is that x equals y over z. So I'm calling this x and I'm calling this here y over z. So for the proof, we see that a to the power of x equals m. We see that b to the power of y equals m. and b to the power of z equals a. Now somehow we have to combine these together in such a way that we end up showing that x equals y over z. Well, you can see that a to the power of x is equal to b to the power of y because they're both equal to m. They're both equal to the same thing. So we get that from these two. We also see that a equals b to the power of z. So we can replace this a here with b to the power of z. So we get b to the power of z to the power of x equals b to the power of y. But of course we just multiply these powers here. Um, so we get b to the power of z times x. Now these are the base numbers, they're both the same. So that means that the powers are the same. So y equals z times x. which is the same thing as saying that x equals y divided by z.